This is KGW News at 11. Hello everyone. First tonight, the snow is falling again and it is starting to stick around the metro area. And this is going to freeze overnight, so it could make for a tricky morning commute. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter and I'm Dan Haggerty. So we have several schools we want to tell you about, including Gresham Barlow, Evergreen School District and Vancouver all already right now planning a two hour delay for tomorrow. And this is just part of that list. If you want to see the full list, you can uh, scroll to the you can go to KGW.com. Now let's get right to our storm team coverage for you. Lindsay Nadrich out on the road. She's tracking conditions for you there. We'll check in with her in just a minute. But first, let's go to Chief Meteorologist Matt Zafino in the Weather Center. Thanks, Dan. That's right. The roads are becoming snow cover. This was about an hour or two ago up in the West Hills. The roads cover the main roads had been de-iced and they were still wet, but I have a feeling they're going to be getting covered over as well. Here's kind of a foggy shot of the Morrison Bridge also covered with snow. We've seen the car slowing down 30 degrees in Portland and our light snow continues. Now you can watch this band descend from Clark County and from the northeast to the southwest. The heaviest is now over Clackamas County from Canby southward and then out towards Washington County, the Washington County, Yamhill County line. There's still some in the Portland area, but up over Clark County, it's beginning to become a little more broken up. I'll give it another hour, maybe two before this winds down, but we already have a half an inch of new snow in downtown Portland. I just went out and measured it a bit ago. Temperatures are all below freezing, so everything we have will be there when you get up in the morning and get ready for school, work or whatever. And keep this in mind too. That new snow may be covering up areas of ice that froze from the wet roads that happened before this snow fell on top of it. So there could be ice underneath the snow that's falling out there down to 33 in Salem, 29 Corvallis. Salem, you will be below freezing as well. So the snow continues till about midnight or 1 a.m. Valley's about a half an inch. We're pretty much there downtown anyway, maybe as much as an inch up in the hills, and it'll stay below freezing until mid morning tomorrow. In fact, when you look at our temperature graph here, we don't get up to 32 until 11 o'clock and We've got another shot of some even more significant lowland snow coming up in our seven day forecast. Back to you. All right, more from Matt in just a bit. And he said the big concern for tonight and tomorrow morning is going to be that ice below freezing temperatures and road crews are out there prepped for these icy conditions. KGW's Lindsay Nadrich is in drive eight for us tonight with four things you need to know before you head out in the morning. Lindsay, tell us how the roads are right now. Yeah, so we've been driving around for about two hours from Portland. We headed north onto I-5 to Highway 14 to 205. Now we're back on Highway 14. I'm going to give you a look out our window here. In the last hour, things seem to be getting worse. We've hit a few slick spots on the road because the snow is really starting to stick. Here on Highway 14, we also saw a car turned the wrong way in a ditch on the side of the road. Crews have since cleared that. We don't know if that was weather related, but things are getting a little bit slick out here. Earlier this evening, I spoke with the Portland Bureau of Transportation and the Oregon Department of Transportation about what crews are doing tonight to combat icy conditions. Well, we have all of our salt and de-icer crews, so everyone's out. And then tomorrow morning, early tomorrow morning, we'll have additional crews come in and they will have sand and gravel. And so they'll be able to put down the sand and gravel if needed in, in, in really slick spots. Our crews are working 24 hours a day. We are going to be out applying de-icer in appropriate locations, but drivers still need to use caution because de-icer and salt is not a magic bullet that makes everything completely thaw. Although crews are working through the night to keep the roads from freezing, black ice is still a big concern overnight and into the morning commute. ODOT says drivers should be aware that any road service that's wet is most likely frozen, so use caution. As you wake up tomorrow morning and get ready to head out, here are four things to consider. One, check road conditions before you leave your house. ODOT, Peabot, and Clark County all have interactive maps online that show current conditions and what roads have been treated with de-icer or salt. We've posted links to all of those maps on KGW.com. Number two, if conditions are icy as expected, leave later if possible when the temperatures are higher and things have a chance to thaw out. Number three, consider taking public transit. ODOT suggests leaving the driving to the professionals. And number four, if you do have to drive, be careful and remember the moisture we're getting in the overnight hours is likely frozen on the roads. Because of the icy conditions, it's even, you know, there's more caution that's needed, uh, you know, because black ice, like I said, is really uh, can be really, really dicey. 
All right, back out here live on Highway 14. You can see snow is accumulating on the road. So if you do have to head out, just be really careful. We are hitting a few slick spots. People driving out here are going a little bit slower because of that. Back to you. All right, good reminder. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll check back with you a little bit later in the newscast. CL. Things are shaping up there on the roadways. Meanwhile, Multnomah County's Joint Office of Homeless Services declared a severe weather alert. What that means is they're going to have extra shelter beds available tonight. Severe weather shelters are open currently at Bud Clark Commons. That's at Northwest 6th and Hoyt in Northwest Portland and Sunrise Center at 189th and Burnside in Gresham. Anyone who needs a place to sleep, call 211 and find a bed and get transportation if you need that. The Joint Office works to make sure that anyone who needs a bed can get one. During severe weather, we don't turn anyone away from shelter. And if a severe weather period extends into multiple days, often the initial shelters will fill up and then we will find new shelter sites to open. We've identified sites that can be used for shelter if the need arises. Again, if you or someone you know needs a bed out there, call 211 or check 211info.org. In a developing story tonight, rescue crews have located an injured hiker in the gorge. She's been lost for a couple of nights. Now they need to get to her. So these rescue crews got her coordinates. This is after she was able to make a 911 call today. KGW's Mike Benner reports now from the command post. Well, some promising news to report on this cold, snowy night in the gorge. We can tell you that search and rescue teams have reached the missing hiker. She's in some tough terrain. Getting her out is proving to be a challenge, but it should happen very soon. This video, shot late tonight, shows search and rescue volunteers heading up the mountain. They're looking for Leslie Trapeza. The wife, mother, and doctor went for a day hike Sunday. Somewhere along the way, she got injured and lost, most likely around the Warren Lake area where the snow is approximately one and a half feet deep. We're told Trapeza was able to text a family member, but further efforts to contact her or ping her cell phone were unsuccessful. Fast forward to Monday evening. Authorities say Trapeza was able to call 911. That gave search and rescue teams the coordinates they needed to track her down. She's injured. She already went through one night out there, uh, which, you know, for anybody that's going to deplete your, your body reserves. Um, and so... I'm really relieved that we're looking at being able to get her out tonight. And perhaps nobody is more relieved than Leslie Drapiza herself and family and friends. Some of them are here at the command post eager to get their arms around her. The hope is sooner rather than later. As always, for the very latest, be sure to tune in to KGW News at Sunrise tomorrow morning. For now, reporting from the Starvation Creek Trailhead just east of Cascade Locks, I'm Mike Benner. Now back to you. We'll be glad when they are reunited. Continuing our snow coverage now, the winter weather made for quite the sight on the coast today. Would wow. you look at that? This doesn't happen very often. Several inches of snow piled up, even on the beaches. Just a snowball's throw from the ocean. A lot of kids got the day off from school, and that gave them time all day to turn the sand dunes and Cannon Beach into sledding hills. Longtime residents say, yes, this does not happen very often. Very unusual. Uh, my daughter's 15. The last time we had that much snow, she was five, I think, where we got to go sledding like that. And so it's I've seen it a couple times my whole life. People who couldn't get to the beach stopped in the coast range. The rest stop along Highway 26 was a pretty popular place. You can see lots of people there. They are making snow angels and snowmen. I can't get enough of that snow at the beach. It's amazing. So many of you sent in some amazing shots today, a lot of them from the coast. This is a beautiful video right here of elk roaming in the snow there. This was Ryan Beasley. Thanks for sending this in. Oh, I love that. And check out this gorgeous shot from Paula. Snow top trees for miles. This is from her deck in Seaside. And Michael King caught the snow on the sand in Pacific City before it all melted away today. How cool. And then Jeannie sent us in this shot right now enjoying the beach in Manzanita. How cool is all of this? Amazing. Thank you so much. We appreciate all these viewers sending in these pictures and letting us share them. Please use the hashtag MyKGW when you post things online. And again, we would love and be honored to share your footage on our air. Matt will be back with your complete forecast in just a few minutes. And we'll be here tomorrow morning for KGW News at Sunrise to bring you the latest weather and road conditions. In between time, check for updates on KGW.com. 
So tonight on KGW News at 6 o'clock, we took an in-depth look at a crisis happening in Oregon classrooms. KGW investigative reporter Kristen Severance talked with a group of teachers from schools all over our area and found out they have to deal with some very shocking behavior in the classroom. Literal screaming, like they're screaming for help, literally. And so sometimes that comes out in, you know, suicide threats or death mm -hmm. threats. And they are throwing furniture, they're running through the building, going to the office, throwing chairs at windows. Um, and it's, it's really intense. We've seen students hurting other students or throwing other belongings. Um, students uh, throwing tables over, throwing chairs at adults, at other students, wood blocks. Um, I've been called every name in the book. I've been punched and kicked and uh, I've had colleagues bitten. Uh, slapped, mm -hmm. scratched, uh, yeah, scratched mm -hmm. with finger, fingernail. I've had fingernail marks down my arm. You're saying this happens a lot. Oh yeah, yes. daily. Absolutely. Oh, it's daily. every day. The building. Mm -hmm. Every day. Every every day. Absolutely. Yeah. They're not one-offs anymore. Right. They're so common that it's not noteworthy when they arrive home. So, Kristen also takes a look at why teachers really have their hands tied when it comes to dealing with these kids. You can watch the full report right now on KGW.com. It's really worth a look, and a lot of people are watching the footage and weighing in on social media, reacting to these reports on our Facebook page. I want to read a few of them now. For instance, uh, Dennis saying, glad I'm retired. I would never encourage anyone to go into education these days. Our American schools are in crisis, and I blame our politicians and parents today who do not seem to feel education and respectful behavior is important. And Chris writing in also saying, thank you to those teachers in this report and took courage to speak up. Schools are discouraged from suspending or disciplining kids and teachers are told to handle these problems on their own. It's a disaster. We'd of course like to hear what you think, what you have to say. Join the conversation by following KGW TV 8 on Facebook.